Praise the Lord, everybody. I've got a Bible study for y'all today. I've got an interesting title for this for this Bible study. I will title it "Time to Eat Crow." I'm going to I'm going to do some narrative uh, preaching or teaching in this Bible study. I'm going to look into Genesis chapter 33, the first four verses, and I'm going to read from the New King James Version. <clears throat> Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maidservants. And he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. So, Jacob and Esau are meeting again for the first time in, in at least 20 years. The last we've seen these two brothers together, Jacob tricked Esau into giving his birthright to him for a bowl of soup, and then later on, Jacob and Rebekah conspired to trick Father Isaac, who is at a great age and blind as a bat, into blessing Jacob instead of Esau. Uh, Rebecca overheard it. Her, um, sorry, Isaac told Esau to go get some venison and make savory meat. Rebecca overheard and had Jacob take two goats and put their hair on Jacob. Jacob, dressed in goat hair, went in uh, to his father. And he sounded himself, but he felt like Esau, effectively tricking e Isaac into blessing him. Esau came back and Isaac had no blessing to give, leaving Esau without a birthright and a blessing. Esau threatened to kill Jacob, and Jacob fled to Uncle Laban's and worked for Uncle Laban for at least 14 years, 7 years for Rachel, and or 7 years, and he got Leah, and he worked, got tricked by Laban, and he worked another 7 years to, to get Rachel. Jacob's actions tore the family apart. He did wrong to Esau, and it is time for Jacob to eat crow. So what is eating crow? Do we actually eat them nasty black birds? No. Eating crow is publicly admitting that you were wrong. It is very humiliating. It is a very humiliating experience. It is not fun eating crow at all. It is a very humbling experience. I've had... I've had my share of eating crow and it's not fun. <laughs> so back to the story in, in Genesis 33. In the first two verses, once Jacob saw Esau and his 400 men, the man in him caused him to arrange things for his own benefit just in case things got ugly. Remember, the name Jacob is translated as deceiver. Jacob divided his children among Leah, Rachel, uh, um, Zippah, which is Leah's handmaid, and Bilhah, which is Rachel's handmaid. He then put Zip, Zippah, Bilhah, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali at the very front. <laughs> he then put Leah, Ru Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Dinah right behind them. He then had Rachel and Jacob in the safest spot last in line. There's some, hier there's some hierarchy in Jacob's family. The least favorite at the front uh, to take the most attack and the most favorite are at the back uh, safe from harm. Ouch. <laughs> it's the, it honestly stinks to be, uh, be the handmaids and their children uh, way at the bottom of the pecking order. Sometimes we tend to just try to avert from eating crow a lot of us try our best to get out of eating crow. We try to get out of it. That is the man Jacob in, a, in us that causes us try to to try causes us to try to use a scapegoat before eating crow. But in verse three, the spirit of God within Jacob caused him to lead his family to Esau, and he bowed to the ground before Esau seven times in total submission. And bowing to the ground is the most submissive posture in biblical history. Jacob humbled himself before his brother, whom he wronged. 
Though we initially try to avert eating crow, the spirit of God in us uh, causes us to directly eat crow and to get it over with. We humble ourselves and admit we are wrong, and we try to make things right with the persons, person or persons we have wronged. The, the more submitted you are to God, the easier it is to humble yourself and eat crow. In verse 4, Esau did, a, did an amazing thing. Though he had 400 men with him, and I don't know what he originally, why he had 400 men with him, but he just ran to Jacob and he embraced his brother. And he, who, he embraced his brother who took his birthright and his blessing. He embraced him tightly and kissed him and they both wept together. So, uh, two brothers reunited. Happy ending. Hallelujah. So why is the story so important? I'm going to turn to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. Now I'm reading from the King James Version now. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. <clears throat> It is important to follow peace with all men. Do not let the root of bitterness take root and settle in your heart. It destroys the spiritual fruit and relationships with God, with others, and yourself. It destroys all three relationships. Eating crow is sometimes necessary to dig up the root of bitterness before it defiles you and others around you. In conclusion, and there are two lessons learned learn from from Jacob and Esau. I want the Jacobs and Esau's who are my readers, who are my viewers and etc to understand these two lessons. Number 1, Jacobs. Just eat crow when you when you wrong someone. Eat crow when you wrong someone. Humble yourself, admit you're wrong and make things right with uh, those you have wronged. And Esau's Receive the apology of the Jacobs who have wronged you. Reconcile with them. Reconcile with the Jacobs who have wronged you. Show compassion and make up with them. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.